Hello and welcome to this walkthrough of the steel standards document. You can find this document of all the new standards on the uh, SAS portal in the Steels Hub, or you can find it linked in the resources in this particular section of your training. So let's go ahead and take a look at the standards document. The second page in this document is really helpful for giving us an introduction to the standards and also an introduction into the design and architecture of the standards. So here we have in the introduction that the steel standards guide the study of the natural and human made world through inquiry, problem solving, critical thinking, and authentic exploration. This document displays the standards within strands as they progress across a K-12 sequence. The integration of these disciplines in the standards highlights the interconnectedness of science, technology, and engineering focused study the integral relationship between humans and the environment, and the importance of integrating the teaching and learning of science, technology, and engineering. Here's some information about the design and architecture. For science, we see that life science focuses on patterns, processes, and relationships of living organisms. Physical science focuses on what everything is made of and interactions. Earth and space science focuses on processes that operate on Earth and its place in the solar system and galaxy. Life science, physical science, and Earth and space science are written as grade specific, grades K to five, or grade banded six to eight, nine to 12 performance expectations and built around three dimensions, science and engineering practices, disciplinary core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts that are integrated into a set of specific standards. These dimensions are elaborated upon in foundation boxes, which are hyperlinked for each standard, providing support for design of curriculum and instruction. Then we have technology and engineering standards that focuses on the interactions among technology, engineering, society, the environment, and other disciplines with a goal of developing individuals that can create, utilize, and assess current and emerging technologies. These standards are written as grade banded performance expectations built around technology and engineering strands, practices, and contexts, and are integrated in a set of specific standards. These components are elaborated upon in foundation boxes, which are also hyperlinked for each standard, providing support for design of curriculum and instruction. And then finally, we have environmental literacy and sustainability standards. And these standards focus on practices, ecological processes, and systems that comprise the environment, including human social systems and influences. The standards are written as grade banded performance expectations and are built around three dimensions, science and engineering practices, disciplinary core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts integrated into a set of specific standards. Sustainability is the balanced use of the natural and renewable resources. Sustainable practices seek to ensure the integrity of ecological function and species diversity with consideration for environmental justice, equity, and economic stability for current and future generations. These dimensions are elaborated upon in foundation boxes, again, hyperlinked for each standard, providing support for design of curriculum and instruction. So some of the big takeaways that I'm seeing from this, this introductory document here are that one, we have standards that are written as performance expectations. So you might see the standard standards, or you might see them referenced as performance expectations. They are interchangeable and they mean the same thing. Another thing that I'm seeing as a big takeaway from this introduction is that our standards for science and environmental literacy and sustainability have integrated into the standard this three-dimensional learning. So we'll see in each standard, you can find disciplinary core ideas, science and engineering practices, and cross-cutting concepts. If you took three different highlighters for each of those components and took a look at individual standards, you can highlight all three of those components in each standard. So every single standard has those elements integrated into it. 
And so this introduction is helpful um, to give us a little bit of an overview of the standards and what we're looking at. I'm going to skip the next two pages here because these are the foundation boxes which you will get some more learning on. Uh, but let's take a look at the next page of the standards which talks to us about how to read the standards. So we always know that these standards have a whole bunch of numbers and a letter at the beginning of it. And this uh, page here breaks down for us what exactly those numbers and letters stand for. So we can see the very first number in the standard uh, gives us the content. So it will either be science, technology, engineering, or environmental literacy and sustainability. All science, environmental literacy and sustainability and t and &E standards are represented with a three. So all of the standards that we're looking at, uh, we'll start with a three. And then the second digit is the discipline. So one is going to represent life science and that discipline within the content of science. The third digit represents the grade level. If a grade level is banded, it will be reflected as six to eight. So you will either, either see this as a band, like it just told us, or if you have a grade level specific standard, like for grade four, this will just say grade four. Or if you have one just for kindergarten, it will say K and so on and so forth. And then the fourth character represents the standard. And the standards start for each discipline with a letter A and then move forward from there. The engineering technology and applications of science, although embedded in the T&E standards, these standards below for grades six to eight and nine through 12 are applicable across all science, environmental literacy, sustainability, and T&E content areas. So these standards uh, specifically are applicable across all of those different content areas. The next page in this document, uh, which this document is hyperlinked, so if there's anything specific you want to look at, you can just click right to it. Um, but this table of contents document then uh, takes our standards and breaks them into disciplines. So we have the life science discipline, the physical science discipline, earth and space science discipline, environmental literacy and sustainability discipline, and technology and engineering discipline. And then within those disciplines, all the standards are broken into strands. So I'm not going to read them all, but you can see that, you know, under the life science discipline, there's the strand of structure and function, the strand of growth and development of organisms. Then in earth and space science discipline, we have the strand of earth materials and systems, the strand of weather and climate, and so on and so forth. So this is how our standards are organized. So if I go ahead and click to anything in here, let's go to wave properties. So I can click right to that section um, and it's going to show me like the introduction in the document told us a progression of this strand across kindergarten through 12th grade for students. And we can see that in kindergarten, it's blank, but in first grade, that's whenever we first start to see that this strand of wave properties um, should be introduced to students. So we have that standard listed there. We see that the standard, um, that this strand of the standard is built on in fourth grade, and then in the grade band six to eight, and the grade band nine through 12. So we see that progression across K to 12. The nice thing about this standards document with the hyperlinks again, as mentioned in the introduction, is that every single standard is hyperlinked to something called a foundation box. So if I'm interested in learning more information about this standard and seeing some more guidance on this standard, you know, maybe I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, hmm, I remember that every standard has the three dimensionality of the standard in it. I don't really know maybe what that looks like for this standard. I can click on the um, hyperlink here. It will download for me and I can open it up and I see a foundation box document. 
You're going to learn more about this foundation box document in the next section of this training. Uh, but this document in general just provides more guidance on instruction whenever I'm looking at this particular standard. So like I said, you'll learn more about this in this training, but that document is provided for every single standard. Um, so I can use this standards document here to become familiar with, you know, the discipline of science that I might teach um, and what the progression of the standards looks like across grade levels. You know, if I'm a, a eighth grade physical science teacher, you know, of course, maybe I'm just going to be concerned at first with, yeah, this eighth grade, this six to eight band. But now I might be asking questions that are like, well, this is a, a band. So what might it look like in a middle school for a sixth, seventh and eighth grade teacher? And what what might they be teaching? So those are some conversations that you might have uh, whenever you're looking at the standards and, and looking at all of the different um, content that you need to cover. So that is a brief introduction into the standards document. Uh, take some time to, to look through it, um, to look at the standards that are in your content area and in your grade level. Um, spend some time in looking at how that standard progresses K to 12 for the strands um, that are here for each of the disciplines. So thank you for listening and um, enjoy looking through this standards document.